In this episode, episode 73, we continue the conversation from episode 72 of how to dominate your trade show. If this is something you're considering for your business, this is dynamite for you. You got to listen. Broadcasting from the box that rocks and thrive15.com world headquarters, it's the Daily Hustle with Daniel McKenna. And so you're maximizing the number of people. Right. Why, why would you have multiple t bistro tables instead of just having a one-man show? I'm like the best salesperson, so I'm just going myself. Because I know that we're going to spend six grand on this show. And I know the way that these trade shows work. Let's say they're from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. There's going to be a big rush of people at 10 a.m. that are like excited to be there, get there. Big rush of people. And then it's going to die down a little bit for lunch. And then maybe 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. after the fashion show or whatever lets out, might get another big group of people. And then it's going to kind of, you know, stay steady, stay steady. If it shuts down at 5, that means around 3 or 4, it's going to start slowing down. Sure. Which means I, only, I have very highly concentrated hours of which there's a ton of people coming through and then there's other times where there's like not very many people coming through. If I'm only one person and it's go time, it's game time, I might spend all my time talking to one person or two people or three people or four people or 10 people as opposed to 20 people or 30 people or 40 people or 50 people. So your sales process, A, they need enough training to do it, but B, it needs to be dumbed down enough to where other people besides you, the sales machine, can have conversations that will lead to the next step, that will lead to the follow-up. Okay. So you've sold me on needing to have a lot of tables. Yes. Do I put these all at the front of the booth or at the back of the booth or where do I put these tables? Depending on how big your booth size is, on the DJ side, when you and I used to do the DJ stuff, selling stuff at trade shows, we would have a 10 by 10 booth. Okay. Which means you can only fit like two or three people up front. That's right. But we had enough space in the back. It's 10 feet wide or 10 feet deep, right? That's right. So we would have bistro tables in the corners, front, front quarters, bistro tables in the back corners, and maybe, maybe, maybe put one right there in the middle. Did it look anything like this? It looked a lot like that. Big, big table in the back. That's where the scheduler sits. That's where the goods are. That's where you get your email addresses. That's where you put your appointments. And you've got your bistro tables laid out in the four different corners to maximize how many people you can get in the booth and give a presentation to all at the same time. Without actually feeling cramped. Right. And how important would you say is making the the person that's actually in the booth that you're talking to feel comfortable and not rushed and the emotional state of her is in that she's being talked to by all these different people. Why is the aesthetics and the layout of the booth so important? Because her attention span is not very long. Depending on where you are in the trade show, like where your booth to happen to be in the layout, yeah. they may or may not be already like worn out talking to people. Like They are tired of talking to people you babbling on for another five, 10 minutes about your services is not what they're trying to do. Okay. So you're talking about babbling on. Yep. It gets us to the, our fourth point. Oh, thank you. The presentation. Ooh. What am I saying to them? They come in and I've wowed them with the beautifully designed booth and I'm not a superstar salesperson. I don't have the natural talent to close them. So what are the most important things as part of my trade show presentation? I have their attention for a set amount of time. What do I need to be using this time for? Well, unless your your booth is just like the, the laser show of laser shows, like so insanely cool that people can't help but go in the booth, which is really hard to do, by the way, unless that's the case, most people are still not going to come in the booth. Okay. Some people will come in the booth. They might know your brand name. They might realize they need your service. They might, so they might come and talk to you. You might be a good enough display that they say, I need a photographer. These guys look pretty good. Let's go find out about them. Okay. That will happen. Okay. But there's a lot of other people too that are just gonna they're just gonna keep on walking. The walk. You've already invested all the time and the money and the design and getting all here, and then now nobody's coming to talk to you. Mm. So you gotta you gotta talk to them. You gotta start the conversation. Okay. So for us, we know they're being assaulted on all fronts all the time. So for us, it's a hey guys, you still looking for a photographer? That's you it. You just ask them. You just like flat out ask them. Because I don't have time. They don't have time to like, let's 
let's start so, having let, a conversation. Let's how, get to know you. Let's, how many how many times how many times do do, do the brides, the people, the attendees walking around these trade shows, do they just walk down to the next booth and then sit there and evaluate whether or not they want to go to into this booth? They say no and then go, go on to the next one, sit there in front of the booth and then just like look up at the booth and say, do I want to go into this one? Nope. I go down to the next booth and I sit there and I look and evaluate. Do I want to go into this one? Eh, okay, maybe. You know, do, do they sit there and evaluate every booth? Never. They they don't no they don't they don't they don't judge they don't uh, they don't sit there and give a a fair judgment to every booth that they walk past they walk past probably ninety percent of the booths ninety percent and maybe ten percent catch their attention okay and they might then give those ten percent be like huh photography I might talk to these guys okay maybe ten percent so you're saying. If I don't have a booth that is a no-brainer to stop and come into and catch their attention, then I got to do something else to get them into the booth. Yes. And you're saying you just got to flat out ask them. Just ask them. But what if that makes me uncomfortable asking them? You're not going to sell much stuff. Ooh, that's harsh. You're not going to sell much of your, your bottles and knickknacks. Well, it's a lot of bottles and knickknack. Well, if you're trying to sell some stuff, you got to find out, you got to talk to people. Okay. And so from there, you ask them, hey... Are you still looking for a photographer? And I say yes. Now, yep. I have a short, limited amount of time. Very limited. So what should I be doing in this limited amount of time? It's still the same process. It's okay. still rapport, needs, benefits, close. Okay. Knowing that I only have a few minutes to get these people interested. Okay. Probably not even that long to get people interested, but a few minutes to like give my spiel. Okay. So I'm going to say, hey, you guys still need a photographer? And they say, no. Or they say, nope. And they don't even answer. They okay. just ignore you and keep walking. That doesn't they happen. They sort of look over at you and then just keep on going. Nobody they just say, looks at no, you. no thanks. And then one goes, yep. So I know I'm going to talk to a lot of people that are going to say no. Okay. And I'm also going to talk to a few people that say yes. Okay. And they're going to say, yep. That's when it's like, all right, it's game on. Now we're going here. Here we go. Now we get into the sales presentation. Okay. So for us... You want to start building that rapport early, right? Yep. So you want to start getting down some early information. So for us, knowing that weddings are on a specific date. Okay. They're on a date. Okay. That's that's the thing that built the wedding is built around is this specific date because it's on a venue, at a venue on this date. Okay. So we say, looking for a photographer? Yes. Cool. When is your big day? I'm up I'm I'm energetic, I'm happy, I'm smiling. Awesome. Cool. Well, when is your big day? It's April the 17th. Oh, cool. Okay, April the 17th. Now, did you guys have a venue picked out? or? Yes, um, it's at the Vesica Pisces. Mm. Okay, okay, Vesica Pisces, April 17th. And they're like April 17th of 2018. Okay. Oh, okay, April 17th, 2018, Vesica Pisces. Got it, and I'm like taking some notes down here because I'll need to know these, and I'll probably forget if I don't write them down right, right away. You're talking to hundreds of people. Hundreds of people. Okay. I'm going to immediately forget. During okay. this conversation, I'll forget. Okay. April 17th, 2018. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, I see you have the venue picked out. You have a little bit of time here. Have you picked out the groom? Is that something that you've picked out, or is that something you're looking for while you're here at the trade show today? <laughs> 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 you see, that is funny. So depending on how good you are delivering that joke... Because you're going to deliver that joke or a joke or something over and over and over. Get them to smile. Get them to kind of like you. That's what's going to be happening in this very beginning of this conversation. Okay. They say, oh, yeah, I got it. I got it. Cool. What's his name? Craig. All right. Lady and Craig. Got it. Got it. Lady and Craig. Okay. Now, tell me, lady. Um, I just said lady because I didn't use a name earlier. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Now, tell me, lady. Um. When it comes to photography for your big day, what is it you're looking for? Mm. It sounded like a segue into needs. Mm. That's exactly what it was. Oh, wow. I'm exactly segueing into tell me what it is that you want to buy. Mm. What solution do I need to provide to help you? Oh, that's amazing. So they're going to say, in most cases, uh, good photos. Okay. So we've talked about previously how there's finding needs and there's creating needs, right? 
Sure. Some pain points people are very aware of. Some pain points people are not very aware of. Okay. So in this case, for photography, if it's the first time they've been married, they haven't done this before. Okay. They say, um, good photos. Okay. Because that's all they know. They all know. The only thing they know to look for is something that, somebody that makes good photos. Okay. So unless you can talk, have a different conversation about those needs, what are they going to ask about? They're going to ask about all the details that don't matter. They're going to ask about price. Okay. Because that's all they know to ask about. That's all they're educated about. April 17th. Vesca Pisces. Cool. How much do you charge? That's what they'll say. Okay. How much do you guys charge? Great question. Great question. When is your day? April 17th. Okay. What, how about the venue? Venue? Oh, really? It did, well, you got a little bit of time here. Have you chosen your groom? <laughs> okay. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what we do. They just came up wanting only the price, and I'm still going to go into my, my spiel. Mm. So I'm, di- I'm now discovering needs. For your industry, it may be very apparent what those needs are, why somebody would buy from you. For this, it's maybe like, okay, well, have you thought about one photographer or two photographers? And they'll say, oh, probably, probably only need one. Mm. Just need a photographer. Mm. So we've talked about before how to handle objections, how to script the conversation. Sure. You need to know what your customers are looking to buy and then script that entire conversation about how you can provide solutions to either needs they know they have or needs they don't know they have. Okay. And I'm getting them more and more entrenched in this conversation by asking these questions, by proving that I'm the expert. Mm. One or two photographers, probably one. Okay, cool. Totally cool. I'm going to write down one. I'll just let you know um, the big difference here, the big difference. One photographer, obviously, this is what we do. These are our careers. We're professionals at this. They're going to capture everything. You're not going to You're not going to miss anything. I'm solidifying that we're legit. I'm solidifying we're professional. I'm solidifying like that's what we do. Sure. The second photographer is good for that other angle, right? So it's, you've got the groom, you've got the bride walking down the aisle. I've got somebody capturing that. But we also have a second shooter capturing, capturing the groom's reaction to the bride walking down the aisle. It's both sides of the story. I'm visually painting, this is why you would want to have two. And that's when they say, oh... I need two. I definitely need two. I need two two photographers. I'm pointing out needs they didn't realize they had, but as soon as I brought them up, they're like, oh, you're right. You're right. I do need two photographers. I need them. And that's how the whole conversation goes. So rapport. Yep. Needs. Yep. Benefits. Yep. Then the close. Yes. Credit or debit card at the trade show. Well, and it depends on how how your business works. Okay. For instance, specifically... With the DJ business, it's a lower ticket item. Okay. People care less about knowing who their DJ is, seeing the quality of their work. Mm. Because DJs are going to play somebody else's songs, be generally upbeat. It's a lot more likely that you can get somebody to pay you right then. Okay. But it's still a wedding, so they might want to look around. They might want to... So you have to set up that follow-up. Okay. Same thing with photography, except even more advanced. Like, it's a more expensive decision. Okay. They want more proof that you're legit. Okay. They want to read other people's reviews. Okay. Almost never are they going to pay you day one at that show. Okay. Almost never. It happens, but almost never. So you got to ask yourself, is my product or service something that they're going to pay for there at the show? Correct is the natural behavior to go ahead and pay for it there at the show and book it or to do more due diligence? Is my, am I selling a software that they can use today? Am I selling some sort of service of which most of my clients would want to shop around for? Can I get those people? Do I normally have people that call me up the first day they go ahead and buy? Because if so, you should go ahead and close them by getting money. Okay. So let's say I'm a business owner and I say, you know, they're not gonna. They're never gonna pay for it right then and there. So why even go, or why even have the conversation? Why don't I just pass out flyers? What should my close then be if it's not to get a credit or debit card? You have to set up the next action step in okay. your process. What do you mean by that? So for us, there is the sale slash pitch. Then there's the appointment, and then the appointment is the first attempt to close. Okay. 
we know that people are not going to come out with their credit cards on their hips ready to throw down three grand. Okay. For somebody they just met. Right. Not going to happen. Okay. Happens occasionally. Usually not. Okay. So we know they're going to want to go home, think about it, meditate about it. Marinate. Marinate about it. Check out some competitors. Check out some reviews. And then really decide, are these people worth three grand or not? Okay. That's what they're going to decide. So we have to have that next conversation scripted of when it's going to happen because they're not going to call us back. We have to have a set time of which we're going to call them back. Sure. So we're going to say, here's I rapport, needs, benefits. And in this case, the close is now. Because I know you're going to talk to a lot of people today, I want you to go home and check out the reviews because I know they're going to anyway. So I'm going to emphasize that. I want you to go home and check out the reviews. I want you to talk to our competition because I know we're better. I want you to go talk to them. Okay. What we're going to do is follow up with you this next week after you get out of all the, you know, the craziness of the bridal fair here. I'm going to follow up with you next week to answer any questions you have, to start doing some timeline planning with you. And really get into some more of the nitty gritty about like what you're looking for on your wedding day. Is normally the afternoon better for that or the evening? Mm. Uh, probably the afternoon. Cool. We'll tell you what. Let me find a time real quick. Let me find a time. I'm going to check on an afternoon time spot for you. So I go up. I talk to my scheduler. I say, I need an afternoon time. And they'll say, um, this is the first appointment today. That any time is, take, is available. And I'm going to say no. Give me two times. Ooh. Don't just tell me any time on Tuesday or Wednesday. Give me two specific times. Mm. Now, one, I do this to make sure that, A, there's a specific time they know I'm supposed to be following up with them. And two, even if it is the first appointment of the day, it's like saying, are you available? Yeah, anytime. Call me. I'm right. I'm, I have literally nothing else going on. Must means I'm not very busy. Must mean I'm not that great. Mm. Right? So I have to have two specific times. Okay, there's a Tuesday at 4. There's a Wednesday at 3. Perfect. I go back. Okay. Lady. All right, lady. I've got a Tuesday at 4 and a Wednesday at 3. Which one works better for you? Now, neither of those questions that I asked if they wanted to have an appointment or if they wanted me to follow up with them. Right. I just said it was part of the process. There it is. We're going to follow up afternoon or evening. Afternoon. Cool. Tuesday at 3 or Wednesday at 2. Whatever times I have available. Sure. They say Tuesday at three. Cool. Now, this is where people, this is where if you don't have a plan going into it, you mess up. Okay. It's that actual specific how we're going to follow up. Okay. So this whole time I've been taking notes on my lead sheet, okay. taking notes about where their day is, what they're looking for, what's important to them, maybe any notes specifically of what they've seen or like or dislike that I want to make sure I remember about them. I'm with you. And on another sheet, another takeaway for them, I'm now writing down the appointment time. Okay. I'm saying, all right, Wednesday at 3 p.m. My name is Daniel. I'm going to give you a call at this time. Here's some takeaways for you to look at. Here's the prices. Here's the marketing material. Take all this away, but Wednesday at 3, we'll give you a call. So I talked about it. I gave them something physical to look at. I'm also going to email them as soon as the show's over. Hey, great talking to you. Here's the kind of recap of what we talked about. I'm going to talk to you Wednesday at 3. I might even go as far as to then text them the following week. Hey, just confirming. Glad to see you. Uh, if you need any appointments or if you need any directions to our office, here's the directions. Or if it's just a phone call, hey, I've got the right phone number here. Just following up Wednesday at 3. And here's also some uh, a link that you can look at some more of our stuff. Ooh. I'm like following up, following up, following up, following up, following up about the follow-up. Because if you don't do those steps, they're going to get busy. They're going to forget about it. They're going to push it off. Okay. And then they're going to get emotionally connected to some other service and they're going to buy them and not you. So follow up is what produces the fruit. Yes. And if you do all of these things, the booth design, close the sale, go in with a sales focus. You do the appropriate table layout of the booth and you have a killer presentation. Would you say trade show marketing, trade show uh, sales can be effective for some businesses? It can be very effective. Like how effective? Like we, um, that and review sites are currently the top two reasons we book stuff. Oh, wow. That and stuff like the not.com. We've won some awards and stuff like that. That and the not.com are the two reasons why we book stuff currently. 
Wow. We've got referrals from vendors. We've got referrals from past clients. Those happen. But this is why this is the big breadth of why we do why we. So you're saying that this could even become your primary marketing effort. It could be if if, if the right people are there and you do it right. Well, there you have it. Super effective. Yeah. And now, depending on your industry and your sales process and what it is you sell, your layout of your booth might be a little bit different. How many people you bring might be a little bit different. But the core of having something good to look at that's attention grabbing, of keeping the booth nice and clean, and everybody's dressed professionally, and everybody's upbeat and energetic, and everybody's not sitting down behind the booth just waiting for someone to come talk to me. And then being able to go through that sales process, report needs, benefits, close. And then follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. You'll sell some stuff. And when you sell some stuff, that brings more money. So that's more money in your pocket. And you can use money for exchanges of good and services. Like? A boat. A boat? <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? You or, want a boat? Yeah. Or pinion wood. Or pinion wood in the boat. Or... A life raft to put in the boat for the pinion wood. I mean, yeah, I guess that's true. I was going to just keep going until Sam laughed. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that was the trade show episode. The high level of executing a trade show. If you want more visual representations or the resources for trade show marketing, mm. you go to Thrive15.com. Tell them about Thrive15.com here, Marshall. Is this going to cost me... You know, I mean, a lot of these courses are $1,000 or $500 or that's pretty normal. What is Thrive15.com and what what's that going to run me? It's the world's best business school. The world's best business school. Really? Yeah. It's the world's best business school. It um, has over a thousand trainings on the different things that you need to know to start and grow a business, including how to operate your trade show. Do we get into specifics on there, like specific moves, specific strategies, what to do? Specific action items for based, you for you to implement immediately. Based on stuff that we've seen that made businesses grow. Things that have been proven to make businesses grow. Okay. So you're going to learn PR from Michael Levine, who did, uh, he was the PR consultant for Cameron Diaz, Prince, Nike, Pizza Hut, Michael Jackson, Clinton administration, a number of different proven PR best practices. Yep. You're going to learn leadership from the Admiral, David Robinson. Ooh. Two-time NBA champion, two-time okay. Olympic gold medal winner. That's right. So the people that we have on there are top-notch mentors, and you can try it out for a dollar for your first month. A dollar. A dollar. One freaking dollar. For a month? For a full month. Now, is this kind of like some sort of like limited access? Like put in a dollar, but you only get to see a few videos? Or how no, you work? get everything. Everything? Just everything. You unlock the entire training library for a dollar. You unlock everything for a dollar. For the first 30 days. 30 days. That's crazy. Yep. A little bit more than a fortnight. So thrive15.com. It's where you go to get started where you can see thousands of training videos they get into the specifics much as we did today with trade show specifics, except you also get assets such as downloadables, illustrations, podcasts. There's, it's all on there. It's all on there. All okay. yours. Okay. That was it for this episode, the trade show mastery episode. Marshall, great job. Thank you. You let you led that like a like a Sherpa. You were the Sherpa of those episodes. They call me Sherpa Marshall. They call him Sherpa. The Big Sherpa. Over on my left, The Big Sherpa. Over here, Daniel McKenna. We'll see you next time on The Daily Hustle. Boom!